you like to have your own personal NHL goalie coach? I created the mentor program 25 years ago and recently the e-mentor program where you can have your own NHL goalie coach regardless of where you live on the planet. Here are some cool details. With our e-mentor program, it's a comprehensive program that's done remotely. We do video analysis where I look at your clips that you send me of your games to show what you're doing right and some corrective things if we need to make some mistake corrections, puck handling touches, rebound control, goals against, saves, and we distill it down and say, listen, here's what you're doing well, here's what you gotta fix, and you get your own NHL goalie coach to correct your mistakes for you and send you on the right path. With the eMentor program, I also function as a family advisor, helping you set up team tryouts, getting you placed where you need to be placed, and getting you to a level where you deserve to be, reaching out to my vast network of contacts that I've accumulated over all these years playing, coaching, and scouting in the NHL. It's the best way to get your kid where he needs to be, where they deserve to be. Another thing with the eMentor program is it's a 24-7 resource for the parents. A lot of times parents don't know the pathway, they don't know how to manage the situation their kid's in, and with the eMentor program, the parents get to leverage my experience and expertise in these areas. So, another great feature of the eMentor program is 24-7 consulting with the GOAT. In the eMentor program, we look at nutrition. We do a detailed analysis of your caloric intake, and we get you on a, a program with our certified nutritionist to make sure you're eating like a professional. With a sports car, an elite exotic car, it needs special fuel to function at its best. And as an elite athlete, you're no different. We teach you how to eat properly and become the Ferrari and Lamborghini of goaltending that you wanna be. We also look at your off-ice training. Are you doing the things you need to do to be the most powerful, explosive, dynamic, athletic kid? Which is what we look for when we're scouting. We take you and we assess where your fitness level currently is and we put you on a program that's age-specific and position-specific so you can become the best physical goaltender you can be with the attributes you possess. Another key feature of the eMentor program is homework. Homework? You want more homework? Yes, you do. Because to become a great goalie, you can't be a driving range goalie. A lot of goalies do lessons. They look good in a structured environment. But you know what? We need to teach you how to read the play, connect the dots, and be a critical thinker. And we do that with homework. I assign games for you to watch. There's a script. There's a diary we create where you assess scoring chances and puck handling touch for cause and effect. What hand was the guy? What was the read the goalie made with their depth? We teach you how to play the game in the eMentor program. So don't let your career end by being the best looking, best moving goalie in the beer leagues. Take your skill set and apply your critical game reads that we teach you so that you can play at the highest possible level that you can. For the most part when I'm doing drills, I don't like stationary pucks because you very rarely get a guy standing still shooting. But for warm up purposes, it's, it's key. So you're gonna drop right here in your butterfly and he's going to put about some 50-60% muffins up to your trapper and let's seal it in the pocket and let's make sure you've got a good head switch over to watch right in the glove. So, some up to the glove to get him warmed up. Squeeze it. More cushion, more cushion. That's it. That's the best one yet. Now we got her going. Now we got her going, Marky. Two more. Last one. Very quick, very precise. So we're gonna stay down and we're gonna get the blocker activated now. And same philosophy, let's let the speed of the puck do the work, slight turn, and the same thing, manage it with your head. So you're watching it off your blocker into that corner. Yep, turn it, that's it. Make it smooth, don't poke at it. Just gent, that's it, that's it. That's what I like. Two more, last one. Your improvement puck to puck is nice. So we're gonna reset the pucks up for the last little warm up drill. And we're gonna start off hugging your blocker side post. You're gonna step out to the top of the crease and he's gonna put a gut trap in on you and I want you to cushion it and make it stay in your gut, okay? Where do you want it? This is gonna be uh, 50 percenters right up to his nuts because he's gonna be doing gut traps. So make it stay up in your jersey and the next puck will alternate, come off the other post. Step out. Yeah, get those knees down. Come out nice and low in your stance. Excellent, excellent.
Last one. Out a boy. Grab a little drink, Mark. You are warmed up. So, lawyer, playing a band, used to be a martial arts fighter, perfect combo. You're a tough guy in court to beat. Now watch what we got here. Tommy's gonna chip to the side wall where it says Grey Ridge Eggs. He's gonna come in off the wall. The net from that angle when he's shooting from over there is many stick net size, it's tiny. So he's shooting from right there. Let's not let him score short side. And if we got no off puck thread over here, let's not be complacent deep back in the blue. I be heels at the top of the paint. Let's just watch the puck in and out and get some more shots off the wing here. Here we go. Nice knee drive. Oh boy, let's say Mark. Four more over there. Good stick. Try to elevate that puck with your stick. Good save. Just a little more patience before you drop. Just wait till he releases. That's better timing on the drop. Better timing. Three more. Nicely done, good challenge. Two more. Last one. Excellent, all right, let's switch sides. Same thing, here we go. Nice stick, nice stick. You got it, you got it. Oh boy, nice save. Three more, Tom. No goal. I don't think he scored on you yet, Tom. I don't think he's got one yet. You've been shutting out the drills. All right, last one. Nice save. All right. All right, Tommy is gonna be right here, a stick length away from the net. I'm gonna pass to him from the corner, from the hash marks. And I want you to make a read on a couple things. So to be clear, when we talk about the RVH and you said you've unfortunately been a victim of watching my videos, when he's a stick length away, like he's right in here, this is a perfect time when he walks where you can RVH. If he walks out a little bit higher or out from the corner, it's where we want to capture the top of the crease and not get back, back locked into the post. The other read is in the game, if you got some donkey sitting back here, our read has got to be, we can't be too aggressive on him. If this guy's wide open, the likelihood of him getting it's immense. Remember proportionally, if a guy's super, super open and you're playing with decent players, the open guy's invariably going to get it. He's way more lucrative spot than this guy. Now, if you've got nobody over there, and he walks out and he launches a backhand from here, you don't want to be butt glued to the goal line, get out to the top of that crease. So low walkouts, pop out, rebounds are live. That's it, play it, play it. If it's tight, play it out. Get those knees down. Hey Tommy, you still haven't scored yet. Get your knees down a little bit lower, Mark. You're starting to elevate. Get your butt down like you're sitting in a chair. Now Mark, who's got the puck now? There's the first one, the seal is broken. We'll do two more, then you get a breather, Mark. Square to me, square to me. All right, last one, last one.
All right. So as we get tired or physically fatigued, we tend to want to start elevating in our stance because you know with conditioning, that's going to be a lot easier thing. Now he's going to stay on the same side, but watch what he does. Catch your breath and pretend like you're super interested in what I'm saying, and you'll get a perfectly long, appropriate break. I'm going to board pass off the end. He's going to catch it here. He can quick tuck here, or he can catch it off the wall and bring it back here. So this is the perfect time to be using your shoulders, looking through the net to catch him if he's trying to get cute with you. So don't let him sort of shampoo you or zamboozle you. So he can come either way, ready? Oh, you almost got there. Stay low, stay low. Let's do three and then we'll switch sides. Three more, three saves. That's it. Two more. Last one. Last one. Nicely done. But Tom, you got a family, kids? What do you got? Just a wife. Just a wife. Sure, not just a wife. A wife. No, yeah, that's that's the best way to put it, a wife. That you, it's not just a wife. Now, you have a dog to get prepared to maybe have kids someday. Is that the thing? You're working yeah. on the dog, see if you can keep that alive. And How old are you? 34. All right. You got lots of time. I had my three kids by the time I was, uh, I think the first one was at 20. All right. So we're going to do the same thing and keep breathing here while we're resting. So let's watch this. I like when guys, RVH, when a guy's got limited aerial angle because he's tight to you. So what I'm gonna do with him on this variation is I'm gonna pass him back here on the wall. He's either gonna tack straight like that, or you could RVH or however you wanna handle, but if you would RVH, that's where you would do it. Or he can come out through the middle here and then launch one, which would be a step out and gain the top of the crease. Or alternatively, the third option is he's gonna walk out really wide and you definitely don't want to be in the RVH when a guy's shooting with that much gap on you because even at your height, he's still going to be able to find some top shelf. Here we go. So you read whichever way you want. Rebounds are live. I want the RVH to be more reactive though, so start up on your feet and once it comes to him, then you can land in it. But if you're in the RVH right there and I'm over here, I'm gonna drop a bomb on China from right here. So you just set into it as it develops. That's it. Watch that hole. Right in there. Square up to me, I'm alive, I'm alive. That's a great save because you pushed out into him. I like it. I like it. Out of boy. Nicely done. Two more. Great save. Way to get the knees down. Nice knee drive. Last one. All right. And that's what happens. We get a little bit tired. So catch your breath. And we're going to put them on the other side like we did for the second variation. Here's your little sip. I always love watching the NFL guys. Like they can't squeeze the water bottle in their own mouth. They gotta have to have some trainer do it for them. Like way too much. If I was doing that job as a trainer in an NFL team, all I would do is just be spraying their face. Like never hit their mouth once. Just be like, hey, sorry man. Okay. We're going the same thing as we did on the other side. He's gonna grab it here and quick tuck, or he's gonna bring it around here. Which brings up a good point. He's a pretty skilled player playing senior hockey. He's played junior B for St. Mary's and Stratford. And when you play beer league, a lot of times you get this. You get a good quality player mixed in with some benders. And so early on in the skate, if you don't know the group you're with, or if you're playing a, a tournament or something, it's key to identify which guys, make a mental note of which guys are kind of the, the people to be aware of and track when they get on the ice. Because it's so, it's so hard to stop a bender but a, a guy like this, they do way more predictable things. So sometimes, in some respects, it's a lot easier to read it. Here we go. It's 
Stay down lower, get down deeper. A little deeper. Oh, you got back on him, he tucked it, tucked it. Three more. A little more knee bend, a little bit more knee bend, Tom. Two more. Woo, last one. 